All right, so we are back to uh, nurturing our faith. So let's uh, meditate a little bit on meditation. How do you meditate? Tell me the four ways. Meditation. I can only hear shun shun. What? Tell me properly. Meditation. Contemplation. Visualization. Confession. Okay, very good. So we got all four of these. We can apply it in our uh, regular study of God's word. Okay, in that way we can develop ourselves. So every time we read the word, try to use, try to use all these four um, methods or tools to internalize the word. Okay, put the word inside you. Think about the word and make it a part of who you are. Now, how else can we grow in the word of God? The second way. The okay, second way. One was meditation, which we've understood. Second way to uh, work with the word is you can sow the word. You know, sow. Farmers, what do they do? They sow the seed. So when they sow the seed, there will be a harvest at the right time. But what if a farmer does not sow the seed? What will happen? There will be no fruit, no results. And then they wonder, why, why am I not getting any results? There is no seed. There is no crop. Um, where is the harvest? Can't expect harvest. Because we didn't sow anything. In the same way, Jesus taught us. He taught us in the parable of the sower. Do you all remember the parable of the sower? Okay. Uh, I think it's uh, Matthew 14. Uh, 13. Matthew 13. Parable of the sower where he gives us this example of a sower who is sowing seed. And the seed falls on uh, good ground, it falls on stony ground, it falls on thorny ground, uh, right? So ultimately, what is the result? Only the seed which falls on good ground grows up and it yields the results or the fruit, okay? Uh, but what did Jesus tell us in that parable? What is the seed? What is the seed? He explained the parable later. Correct. So he says, the seed is the word of God. In that parable, the explanation that Jesus gave was, the seed is the word of God. So the word of God is supposed to be sown in our hearts. What is ground? Our hearts. Now, if our heart is good ground, that simply means a heart which, um, which can have faith in God, a heart that can believe, that would be a good heart or a good ground. So, the word of God is the seed, but that seed should come and fall in good ground, which is a heart that believes. Then what happens? There will be a crop. Okay, there will be a harvest. So this is the second way of engaging in the word of God. First, we said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, which means meditate, meditate on the word. Then faith will grow. The second way is sow the seed. The word of God is the seed. So I must sow the word in my heart. I have earlier shared with us that in order for us to uh, develop faith, we meditate on the seeds that can produce that fruit. So, for example, if I want to plant a, a mango tree, uh, should I put, a, what seed should I put? Any idea? What a question. If you want a mango tree, you must put a mango seed, right? In the same way, when I'm talking about the word of God, 
and I want to see God's power or blessing or um, outcome regarding a particular area, I can put scriptures along those lines. So if it's healing, I want to experience healing in my body. What seed should I sow? What seed should I sow? Yeah, the word of God that has to do with healing. So I'll take that and I'll start to meditate on it. Everything, all the things that I told you, you know, meditation, contemplation, visualization, confession, I'll do that with the healing word. Then what will happen? I'll get the result. The fruit is healing because I sowed the seed of healing. Okay, now maybe I want to be um, prosperous or successful. Okay. What scripture should I take? I want to be successful, right? So what scripture should I take? Preparation, okay. Scriptures that help prepare you, okay, fine. What else? Scriptures of blessing, right? Scriptures, promises in the word of God, where you see so many uh, scriptures where God says that, okay, I will bless you. I will bless you. Uh, you're blessed with every spiritual um, blessing in the heavenly places. So I take all these passages and I saw scriptures about blessings, success, um, victory. Then what fruit will I get? What fruit will I get? Same. Blessing, uh, victory, right? triumph. I'll get that. So will I get the fruit tomorrow? Today I put the seed. Okay, I, tomorrow I want it. Are you sure? Yeah, no plant grows like that, right? We put the seed and then we have to nurture it. So, as believers, sometimes we um, take the word and we start to pray it. And then we are expecting, God, today I am not successful. Yesterday onwards I started confessing your word. But how come there's no success in my life today? You have to take time. Like a plant slowly grows, the word of God will grow in my heart. Uh, I'll become strong in my faith, in my confession. Then over a period of time, I'll see that I'm actually walking in the result of whatever I was praying. Okay, maybe months ago or even years ago. So we need some patience. Every farmer needs patience, yes or no? We do need a lot of patience, especially when we are sowing the seed. Some seeds will yield immediate results. Thank God for that. Okay, it's always nice to see immediate results. But some seeds will take time. We have to allow it to grow. And then at the right time, there will be a harvest. So this is the way we engage in the word of God. Firstly, the whole meditation aspect. Secondly, the sowing aspect. Sow the word. Okay, declare the word. There's um, an APC app. I don't know if you have downloaded it. But in that app, there is a section known as toolkit. And in the toolkit, there is, um, uh, you know, a, a portion where you have A to Z declarations. So you can just take those declarations and start to confess them. Even daily. In our prayer time, uh, remember we said when we pray, we can uh, petition God, we can thank God, we can pray in the spirit. We can also have declaration. So one portion of the prayer time can just be declaration. Open up those, those declarations, start to speak it by faith over ourselves. So when we do that, what's happening? It's like farmer. Farmer is sowing the seed. Okay. And at the right time, there will be a harvest. So in this way, we can sow the seed of God's word and see the results in our lifetime or even, you know, after that. Um, so that's about good practices that will help us nurture our faith 
and make it grow because faith can grow exceedingly faith can grow exceedingly all right now how else do we make our faith grow uh, we can there are there are two more sections here one says by being a part of a community of faith okay here uh, in philemon chapter 1 and verse 6 um paul wrote that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in christ jesus so uh, the sharing of our faith will become effective firstly by acknowledgement all right acknowledgement means when we say yes to what god is saying that is acknowledgement what is god saying about us what does god say about us few things that you have learned in your course called as identity who are we in christ we are a new creation yeah we are a new creation what else are we in christ we are a child of god what else are we in christ we are saints so much is there tell me what else we are blessed in every righteous sanctified blessed in every spiritual blessing in heaven yeah we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places we are forgiven we are redeemed right we are risen with with christ so there is so much acknowledgement means i say yes that's right that is acknowledgement but if i don't agree with it or i don't believe in it and i say i don't think so then i'm not acknowledging it so we must acknowledge how will my faith become effective it says here faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in christ jesus so as a believer for my faith to become effective i must say yes lord i am forgiven i am redeemed i am a saint no i am blessed um you can just go on right i am a child of god so that has to become my way of thinking way of living then my faith will be effective and in this passage he also says the sharing of your faith okay uh, so the sharing there is a word called as koinonia koinonia is a greek word and um, koinonia means fellowship or communion see we can all we can all be believers by ourselves okay uh but the bible teaches us to commune or fellowship with other believers that is the healthy christian life that is the healthy uh, walk of a believer so koinonia is fellowship we don't find god telling believers oh you be a believer you're saved you're born again you're in christ you be on your own you don't need other believers the bible doesn't teach us you know being that kind of a person because uh, in the bible we read about the body okay the body we all understand isn't it the body has many parts and every part is important and we've seen how uh, one hand cannot tell the other hand you know i don't need you have you ever seen one hand just floating around on its own because the hand is good enough you don't need the rest of the body i don't need the rest of the body or the head just floating around scary right you don't see things like that happen but the bible teaches us that the body is all together all the parts of the body are together they help each other to function together that simply means as believers we are all meant to serve each other uh, cooperate fellowship live um, and uh, you know serve uh, what can i say uh, extend the kingdom of god together 
so it's not about individual individualism where uh, we say that okay i am a believer i don't need any other believers we can't say that because the bible teaches us that we are the body of christ every part every member is important okay now how can my faith become stronger we've seen how to employ the word and uh, we've also talked about acknowledging we must say yes i am whatever the word says i am you acknowledge it and also share the faith share the faith means no to dwell with other believers fellowship with other believers okay what happens is we are able to fulfill god's purpose in our life when we know how to fellowship in the right way maybe um, you know they can share from their lives uh, about what god taught them how did they journey and that helps us in our spiritual walk maybe there are young believers whom we want to talk to and you know we encourage them and say okay this is how you must put your trust in the lord so in a body we are all helping each other we cannot we we cannot say that um i can be alone and uh, i'll be a great believer it it doesn't show the biblical um you know manner in which god wants us to do our lives as believers we do need fellowship and when we have a godly community a godly um, faith community it will build up our faith okay so we need a good community that we should be a part of and that will also help strengthen our faith then moving on uh, we can nurture our faith with testimonies okay testimonies testimonies are um the examples from people's lives who have been through something and they have seen god's help they have seen god's victory and they share so when we hear testimonies it charges us up and the bible teaches us to share what god has done there are two passages here in our notes um i am on page 63 for all the people whose notes are printed uh, could somebody read these two passages psalm 103 105 verse 2 and 5 and then psalm 145 verses 4 and 5 sing to him sing psalms to him talk of all his wondrous work remember his marvelous works which he has done his wonders and the judgments of his mouth Mm. one generation shall praise your works of the to another and shall declare your mighty acts i will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wonders work okay so we are encouraged right to talk in fact it says sing to him sing psalms so we can even sing about god's goodness god's greatness how god came through for us talk about it share with other believers okay what god has done uh, so that is a way to strengthen our faith uh, has a testimony encouraged any of you a genuine testimony yes all of us when we've heard a testimony in someone's life um, that shows us that if god can do it for that person god can do it even in my life and that's the importance of testimonies so uh, focus your mind on godly testimonies people who have walked with the lord and they have so much to share uh, that's where you know maybe reading books about the lives of godly men godly women uh, sometimes we hear songs right wonderful songs hymns maybe we can go back and read the story behind that song why did this person write the song there must be a testimony behind it that's why they've come up with this song so when we start to meditate on these testimonies even that builds up our faith and uh, it truly encourages us so in this manner we can strengthen our faith so if you have any more questions you can ask but i'm just going back here to the chat uh to answer the questions which are here okay so sunny is asking 
does the holy spirit help believer to visualize while reading the word of god correct yeah so that's true um sunny it is the holy spirit uh, who helps us to get the pictures that are um, like in line with the word so we are not talking about just just imagine just you know visualize not like that but the holy spirit will give us pictures so it is also said that uh, dreams and visions are the language of the holy spirit okay dreams and visions are the language of the holy spirit so when the holy spirit wants to speak to us um sometimes he'll just put a picture in our minds okay uh, it may be when you're sleeping or it may be at any moment but that's how uh, that's not the only way but that's one of the main ways in which god will will speak to us so yeah whenever we are reading the word or we are in prayer time um or even otherwise you can be open the spirit can always be open to what god is revealing so if you see a picture or a communication from god just grasp it okay um did i tell you all uh, the other day about uh one sermon that i had to write and i was not prepared for it and yeah that uh, new wine yeah new wine so that the way that communication came also was yes i got it in my spirit but long ago i had seen an image of um, you know something being poured out of a jar and that was the image in my mind so i immediately knew hey this is new wine so just pick up the images that uh, god may be sharing to us okay good uh, and any other questions any other thoughts about nurturing our faith Yes yes well suppose i shared my testimony with my friends okay who are not christians okay but they don't believe on my testimony so should i keep uh, sharing my testimony to them or should i stop mm okay it really depends if they are unbelievers and you want them to put their trust in jesus and you're sharing it you can uh, wisely share as much as is needed so even if they don't believe you at that time it's okay you can share no problem yeah you can okay but don't force them <laughs> so i um, there was one story like in it happened uh, in the ministry of a friend that i know uh, so this person who has the ministry uh he was working with young people okay uh, a lot of like drug addicts and things like that so uh he once went to share about jesus to one young man but he didn't know that in the house there is um there is there was another guy so there were two guys uh and you know they their habits were not good and whatever so when this person went to the house to talk to one young person he didn't realize there was another guy hiding in the restroom okay and uh, this person went ahead and you know shared his testimony shared about the love of jesus and how jesus can save you jesus can bring you out of all these habits he can make you a new person he can give you a great life and put your faith in jesus so he's sharing all this to this guy this um, you know this young man uh, but the marvelous thing that god has done in in this testimony is that the person who was hiding in the restroom he gave his life to christ okay so today uh, in fact that young man he is so strong in the lord he has a believing wife two um, you know children uh, in the lord serving the lord uh, can you can you think about it he was just hiding in the restroom but he heard the gospel he heard the testimonies okay so we don't know how god can use our testimony to uh, 
change somebody's life so don't underestimate the power of that testimony just pray but be wise be wise in what you share uh, you know what details you choose to share in your testimony it can be life changing for for people okay so uh, yeah so that's something that i remember okay anything other than that fine question question not really okay fine uh, so we've learned a lot about nurturing our faith now let's go to um, keeping our faith strong how can our faith be strong or what is the basis of our faith so we can only have strong faith if our foundation is strong okay now think about um uh, some tall buildings super tall very very tall high buildings in the world how will their foundation be any any idea strong so when they were going to build that building how much do you think they would have dug underneath quite deep so as long as you you want uh a strong building right if you want a strong building you have to lay a deep foundation if you lay a ordinary foundation and you want your building to be you know whatever 50 floors you can build it but i'm not coming near that building <laughs> because it can crash any time it does not have a strong foundation so we are, we all want strong faith tall faith but there has to be a deep foundation only then the faith will stand strong so what is the strong foundation for our faith we will look at four things that make our faith very very strong what are they first is we must be established in the integrity of god's word remember we said that there can be facts but the word of god is the truth okay in uh, john chapter 17 and verse 17 it is there in the notes uh, would one of you read it john 17 verse 17 sanctify them yeah by your truth your word is truth okay so sanctify them by your truth what is the truth your word is the truth so when our faith is based on the truth it's on a strong foundation it will not be shaken but if my faith is based on somebody said this somebody said that some message that i heard but i'm not even checking is it in the word of god is it aligned to the truth of god's word then what happens we are not sure foundation is not that strong but if we are clear that our faith is based on what the truth of god's word says then we can build tall we can build high and have strong faith so the authority of the word of god you know the bible says the word of god carries authority it's the final authority heaven and earth will pass away but the word of god will remain okay so it is the final authority so the word has to be final authority in my life and if i am basing my belief on what the word says then my foundation will be very strong i don't have to worry about um you know my faith being shaken you got it so the most important thing is what does the word say so um apparently like i've uh, heard uh, one particular preacher say this that uh, whenever people used to come to him and say that uh, pastor please pray for me um you know i am believing god for something 
like i'm believing god for um what can we say um the blessing of a house okay so he used apparently used to ask them okay tell me a few scriptures based on which you know you are believing god for this uh but apparently there were there were people who couldn't even share one scripture yes initially when god speaks to us maybe we receive it you know um in a, in a form of a, uh like an image or or a word in our hearts and all all that's fine but eventually uh we can see the truth of god's word and see connected passages of scripture in the in the bible and uh, that will help us stand in that uh, you know in that promise that god is showing us but that preacher said that uh, usually people never had a word they never had a verse they never had uh, you know nothing specific from the word of god and so he always used to uh, you know feel bad that what is this god's people they they don't even know the scriptures they just come and say you know i want this i want that from god but uh, based on what in the bible are you believing god for that and they're not able to even mention one passage from the word of god so uh, you see god is gracious right many times he still answers but the right way is that we must base our faith on the truth of god's word then nothing will shake us um i mean there's so much more that i can talk about it but i'll just stop myself there if you have any questions maybe you can ask so as long as something is the truth right you don't have to worry you know that god will do it like uh, let's say noah god told noah there's going to be a flood now what if that was not true here is a man building an ark telling his family this and that you know come and help me what if there was no flood it's very sorry state of affairs but when god says something that is the truth and then noah started to build the ark it makes sense because the flood came and the world was destroyed so i must base my faith on what god is saying if god has said it i don't have to be afraid people around me say what are you doing how can you believe god for this because his word says heaven and earth will pass away but his word will not pass away so the word of god is the final authority in our lives it's the truth so faith is always connected to the truth if faith is not connected to the truth it won't work if faith is my imagination right so just imagine stuff uh, okay i loan a helicopter i'll own this i loan that but is that what god said if god didn't say it don't don't ask god god why didn't you do it he'll say i never said it who asked you to believe in something that i never told you so faith has the basis of the word which is the truth if there is no truth then faith is not faith only you can just maybe as a principle you can have faith but it won't work truth is what forms the foundation so be strong in the truth what does god's word say about you know this or that or something else then faith will be strong okay so be based in the truth second be established in the finished work of the cross that means we must be strong in what jesus has done on the cross what has jesus done on the cross anyone yeah he was crucified but what what was the result of that we are yes our sins are forgiven we have salvation we are sanctified or made holy we are forgiven right um we are redeemed the, we are redeemed the blessings of god or the blessings of abraham have come upon us um the 
power of sin in our lives is broken okay sin can no longer rule us that's another reality i can live victorious i don't have to worry about sin ruling in my life i can overcome sin i can overcome temptation um i can overcome you know any attack of the evil one i can live as an overcomer greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world uh and because of the cross we have received wholeness wholeness means completeness or complete blessing of the mind of the body right of our emotions so in every way i can be strong because of what jesus has done on the cross um and uh, because of the cross the curse of sin is broken you know we are no longer cursed as believers uh, unfortunately people still say oh this curse and that curse no the cross has already broken every curse so i must acknowledge that and say every curse it's been broken right because of what jesus has done and um, you know uh, as i receive that truth as i revoke you know those those curses i will be able to walk in what christ has done for us what else has the cross done the cross has defeated satan so satan is a defeated enemy i'm no longer fighting you know uh, an enemy who is literally like um, the battle is kind of over in a sense because satan was already defeated when jesus hung on the cross when jesus died on the cross so that is another reality so every day when i'm living my life i don't have to be afraid as believers oh i'm scared of the devil that's not that's not the truth in the word what does the bible say jesus has defeated satan so if i am a believer i am not afraid of the devil the devil has to be afraid of me am i right correct so in this way having the understanding of what has the cross done for me and my faith starting from that place okay is the strong foundation all right um and there are many other things we can talk about but uh, you know i'll just stop with that so the cross has done so much for us it has put her, put us in the family of god it has uh, included us in the kingdom of god we are now qualified uh, for the inheritance that god has for us uh, and um, you know everything else so a couple of other things that we must be established in so all of this was knowing the cross then knowing the identity in christ okay the identity that we have in christ we've already talked about it if you're strong in that then our faith is strong then understanding the presence and the power of the holy spirit so the work of the holy spirit that's again another um powerful truth that we must we must um, really grasp okay so when i understand who is the holy spirit how does he work in the life of a believer how does he manifest himself what are the operations uh, of the gifts of the spirit okay these things will also help me have a strong foundation of faith in my life so um, you know the, these would be the primary ways in which we can have a strong foundation there's one more included here which is the authority of the name of jesus so when we understand the power in the name of jesus uh, so again how do we apply these things similar to what uh, i had shared earlier we can declare the word okay regarding all these matters we can meditate on the word we can maintain uh, a good conscience we can exercise our faith and also be motivated by love so i will just stop here uh and sister gertrude has a question sister do you want to ask something yes sister yeah. uh, you know for those who are believers they say they don't come under the generational curses but what about the unbelievers unsaved people in your family do they come under the generational curses 
yeah so those who are not believers they are not uh, they cannot receive from the work of the cross isn't it i thought it's for everybody right uh you mean even the unbelievers yes sister see potentially what you're saying is correct meaning for example god so loved the world okay that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him so jesus died for the whole world but is the whole world saved no why because they have not believed in him exactly so unless one is a believer or one is born again <clears throat> one is part of the kingdom of god because of their faith in what jesus has done on the cross they cannot have salvation in the same way all the blessings of the cross one cannot have unless they have salvation you understood okay. sister gertrude yeah yeah sister i understood yeah so see galatians chapter 3 and verse 13 it says christ has rescued us from the curse of the law christ has or in other words it also says redeemed us from the curse of the law who is the us then it's the born again believer so that means those who are not born again they may still or they will still be under curses okay sister thank you yeah sure thank you yes okay sanjay what is the test of fruit of salvation how do we know we are truly saved okay mm. so uh, the test of the fruit of salvation in short uh, brother sanjay is a uh, is a changed life if truly one is born again we will observe a transformation okay uh, by the work of the word and by the work of the spirit so that is very briefly how we can know whether someone is saved or not okay now if you want to learn more about this i think uh, in the book uh, apc publication called as foundations it must be chapter 3 or something where uh, there is a there is a whole section about the fruit of salvation how do we know if we are saved how do we know if we are born again uh, but you know the the fruit comes later but the initial uh, indicator is the holy spirit holy spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are now born again okay i i hope that answers your question okay sure thank you all right any other yes no all right so um in that case we can just wrap up we will pray and close for today and uh, i'd like to request somebody from our online batch to lead in prayer heavenly father we just wish to thank you for um, this time of study and uh, we we just pray father that uh, as we learn from thy word and uh, as we meditate and contemplate on your word 
we pray, Lord, that uh, the Holy Spirit will guide us and lead us and strengthen us, Lord, in our faith. And also, Lord, uh, help us, um, um, as, as Scripture teaches us, help us to commune and fellowship with others, to encourage one another and uh, be blessed by each other's testimonies. And give us a hunger for your word, Father, that we may spend more time in your word and uh, receive from your word. We pray for a blessing upon all our teachers from APC and upon all the students of APC, Father. And uh, we ask this in your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Brother Sanjay, for leading us. Um, so, all right, we close for now. We'll uh, meet in our next course about prayer tomorrow. Okay, uh, Nadell is asking for the resources. I've already put that in the chat. Uh, Nadell, I hope you got it. Uh, let me copy paste it again for you. Yes, I posted it again. Sure. Thank you.